game very gently, making sure he doesn't give up any Pokemon. And, and this Togekiss facing down a number of issues right now, uh, mainly the Lapras in the back. Uh, that even mm. if the Togekiss starts to pick up knockouts, that Lapras can come in and just freeze dry at some point. Yeah, Togekiss going for the Dazzling Gleam here. It does manage to pick up the KO against that Rillaboom, but thanks to the recovery um, of the Porygon 2, it is able to hang on here. And I think the critical thing was that critical hit from the Porygon 2. You know, losing Tyranitar was a shame for Matt, but it would have allowed him to bring in that Togekiss um, that could use some redirection, or it could be able to pick up some KOs with those Dazzling Gleam. You know, the Porygon 2 was kind of forced to go into that recover to make sure it got enough HP as this Trick Room turn ended. Um, but unfortunately, losing both Pokemon... As you've mentioned, Lapras is still in the back. Togekiss is going to be in a really precarious situation. But I think that Porygon 2 was just so angry as it was constantly being targeted down by Matt's Pokemon. Um, you know, it lost its Eviolite. It was ready to deal out some big damage. And that's exactly what it was able to do and turn this game one around for Eduardo. Porygon 2 draws such a weird attention to it. You have to have something to do with the Eviolite. And Matt, you know, very smartly in team building, realizing that knockoff is the way to go. I think a lot of trainers pivoting to knockoff now and understanding that so many Pokemon rely on their item. Knockoff is absolutely key. So that's a really good turn for him. But then the Porygon 2 just keeps drawing attention to itself with the recover over and over again. And I think we've seen three mm. recovers now. Every time that Porygon 2 looks very healthy afterwards, even after taking a pretty significant hit. So the Porygon 2 has been sticking around, really trying to solo out this game on its own. Uh, really go 1v4 for the, the Porygon. It has had a lot of help though. Uh, that Rillaboom was absolutely key, and, and I think Eduardo's Rillaboom prov was providing a lot more value than Matt's in the end. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's another mechanic in play at the moment. You can see that timer ticking down in the center of the screen. Eduardo took the full time to bring his Lapras in, even though it was his only Pokemon option. And you saw Matt locking very quickly, but Eduardo taking every second possible so that the timer can run down and he will have the Pokemon advantage with two Pokemon to Matt's one. This is one of my pet peeves when it comes to the VGC scene and just any kind of Pokemon battle. Winning by timer stall. Let me just put the setting for that battle you just saw in the opening two minutes of this video. It was the EU bracket of the losers round, with Matt going up against Eduardo. The losers bracket is for those who have one last chance to stay in the cup. Lose, and that's the end of your road. In the first round, both trainers were throwing powerful blows against one another, with Eduardo going for G-Max Lapras to set up the Veil, and Matt going for G-Max Urshifu to try and deal massive damage. But Eduardo kept on going for the Intimidate game to reduce the damage coming into his team. It eventually came down to a long slog of a match with Matt trying to be offensive and Eduardo going for sustain with life dues and recover as well as the grassy terrain. The battle only ended as you saw when the timer ran out. Now, don't get me wrong. While I have massive dislike for timer stalling wins, this is the loser's bracket of the Players Cup, where both players are facing elimination. They must win these battles, so it makes sense that they would go for the best win condition. But I'm not the only one who dislikes the timer stall win condition, as that particular battle, if it had just another few more minutes, could have been won by Matt with the crit kiss. Eduardo lost his Porygon's Evilite earlier in the fight, Aurora Veil was gone, and Trick Room was over. It would have come down to if Crit Kiss got the crit on Porygon 2 and the Lapras, and if it did, could it have picked up the double KO for the win? However, with only less than 2 minutes left, Eduardo goes for the timer win condition, hoping the combined HP of his remaining Pokemon would give him the win. And I'm not the only Pokemon one who option. doesn't and like how that, that win was achieved. Just looking at possible, Jet, so you can see can they down, don't like he how he takes the, the full 45 seconds to, to select his one. last Pokemon available, the, the Lapras. Well, the timer is there to ensure that battles don't take over two hours. I personally don't feel it should be the win condition that players should aim for. Now, Eduardo could have probably won that with the Porygon, even if it got critted without the Eviolite, it was able to survive enough health that a crit would have been necessary to get enough damage for a KO. 
But then it comes down to if the Porygon could have gotten the damage out or a crit of its own for the KO win. Winning by timer stall is acceptable in my opinion if it's used as the decider between the two trainers and not as the primary win condition. Also, if the timer calling the winner waited until after both players had made their moves, then we could have seen what would have happened. Would Crit Kiss have won the battle for Matt? Or would Porygon have won it for Eduardo? What is your opinion on the timer stalling in battles? Did you have any such battles? And if so, how did it go? Until next time, my viewers.